your windows and turn off the lights. Welcome to Michael Myers Minute, where I delve into the 1978 horror classic Halloween one minute at a time. I'm your host, Robert Black. Michael, the stunt performed by James Winburn, falls from the second story right down. The script says, right down into camera with a crash. He lands in front of the camera a little to the right, out of frame. And now the IMDb goof! In the movie's climax between Dr. Loomis and Michael Myers, Michael falls from the balcony of the master bedroom to the backyard below. Lori has put the kids to sleep here shortly before being pursued. When Lori was being chased moments before and she realized she lost the keys to the Doyle residence, Lori managed to get Tommy's attention from a bedroom window facing the street in front of the house. (sighs) Yeah, I already covered that one a few times. Get some new material, imaginary IMDb goof writer. For example... In this moment in Halloween 2, minute 3, second 33, Michael falls over steps onto and over a completely different railing on a completely different balcony. The one over the front porch. The script cuts straight to Angle and Hall, but second 3, we get a reverse shot from above. Michael lies on the ground, seemingly dead. Whatever yard this shot was filmed over, it has a lot more dirt than grass. This will matter a lot in three years when Loomis goes out to check the lawn and finds blood and some dead tree or something that seems positioned just to be a visual cue for the audience in case we're too stupid to understand shots and reverse shots later. And we get a musical stinger. The last one of the film. It's a low one. It isn't trying to scare us, it's just trying to augment the import of this moment. As far as we know, Michael is dead, or dying, and the struggle is over. Second seven, Angle on Loomis. Because of poor editing... Or just Loomis's own madness. I'm leaning toward madness. He pulls the trigger one more time. But there are no live rounds left in the gun. And his target has already fallen. He pulls the trigger this extra time in the Halloween 2 version as well. Where he's already fired an extra shot. So hey, Loomis is mad. Second 10, Angle on Lori, her hands, which were already coming down when we saw her last minute, are up by her ears again. She lowers them and second 14 looks past camera to... At this angle, she's not looking at Loomis. He should be off to her right, not in front of her. The way she looks up, though, I think the intention, the direction, was that she was looking at Loomis. In the script. Loomis rushes to Lori and bends down beside her. For a moment, she just cries in his arms, sobbing hysterically. Then she looks up at him with a glazed, wild expression. Something similar happens in the novelization. Quote, She did not ask at first who a rescuer was. She simply fell into his arms and burst into racking sobs. His embrace was so comforting, she could have fallen asleep in it. Maybe if she did, she would wake up to find the world as it had been this morning. This morning? Was it a mere 16 or 17 hours since she had stood on her doorstep bantering with her father? It seemed as if she'd lived three lifetimes in that scant time. Suddenly she was in pain. The adrenaline that seemed to act as an anesthetic started to wear off. Her ankle throbbed where she twisted it, dropping over the stairs at Lindsay's house. Her wrist ached and had begun to swell where he'd cracked the bone. Her slashed arm tingled agonizingly. Her scalp felt as if someone had taken a tomahawk to it. No, these were not the symptoms of a dream. This was the nightmare of reality. It would take her years to absorb this truth, and a lifetime to ponder it. The man released her, and she looked up at him. Thank you. Are you a policeman? He smiled. No, just a friend. A friend with a gun. Thank God. Thank God. Loomis was trembling. He hyperventilated several times to slow down his racing heart. End quote. And I think it helps both characters that none of this happens. Loomis may have stepped in, but Lori doesn't need a hug. She needs acknowledgement. And Loomis doesn't need to be saving someone. He is just there to stop Michael Myers, who he has been warning the world about for a decade and a half. In the film, before we cut away, though, she looks again to the right and downward. Then second 19... Also, minute three, second 48 of Halloween 2. She looks up again and speaks. Lori, it was the boogeyman. Second 22. Angle on Loomis. Smoke still floating away from his gun. He lowers it and turns. In the script, Loomis looks down at her, then up at the shattered window at the end of the hall. But Michael didn't go through a window in the movie. He went through the open door to the balcony. Second 24. He leans against the door frame a little. Second 26. He gives the slightest of nods, like he's answering this in his head before saying it out loud. 
from the novelization of Halloween 2. Loomis took a long time answering, trying to find the right words. Words that would mean anything at all. Finally, they came to him with great effort, as if he were being re-educated to their use. Loomis. As, as a, a matter, matter of fact, fact it, it was. was. While I will get to more detail from the original novelization's final pages, Loomis's response here is the last line there. Second 30, Angle on Lori as she takes this in and looks to the right again. And I feel like this moment is staged like she is inside the bedroom itself, when she should be out by the stairs. Loomis's shadow crosses in front of her now as he's heading from the bedroom doorway across the bedroom to the French doors to the balcony. One, there is no light behind him. Two, his shadow should not be anywhere near her because he's moving away from her, not past her. Second 36, Angle on Loomis. He walks slowly down to the window and peers out. Second 39, he stops short of the doorway to the balcony, which, with either the balcony here or the one in Halloween 2, he wouldn't even be able to see Michael, even if he was still there on the ground. Loomis needs to go to the railing, but I'm guessing they didn't have any scaffolding or a crane to shoot level to the balcony, so the camera had to be between Donald Pleasance and the edge of the balcony just to get the shot. Second 41, Loomis's POV into the backyard. The high notes kick in from the novelization of Halloween 2. His eyes took in the grass below. Let me hold this last picture of him in my mind forever, he thought, for the longest day that I live. Whenever I am afraid, whenever anyone is afraid, I will be able to dredge it up from memory and be assured that he and the evil he represents are no more. The script says, he looks down at the spot where Michael should be, but there is nothing there. Just a trampled patch in the grass. I would also point out that there are some plants and empty pots at the upper right corner of the frame, like maybe this is the same backyard we've been seeing behind the Wallace house, which may or may not have been associate producer Cool Lusby's backyard. I don't even remember now if I ever confirmed that for sure. Second 46. After five seconds of empty lawn and eerie music, angle on Loomis. From the script. He stares down with a growing fear, then looks out from the house. Loomis's POV, the backyard, the neighboring yards, the street are all empty, quiet, dark. There is only the sound of the wind swelling in the trees. Michael is gone. But in the film, Loomis doesn't look up just yet, and we don't get that highfalutin big-budget shot of the rooftops and whatnot, and we don't get any wind. Instead, second 52... Angle on Lori, as she realizes, even though she should not be able to see Loomis from where she is sitting, what he is not seeing. She brings her hands to her face and audibly sobs. And the minute ends. Thank you, Alan, for doing this weird sort of guest spot. One more time, how can the listeners stalk you? Well, you can find us by going to thewilderide.com. That's our website. From there, there are links to our social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And, of course, the name of our podcast is called The Wilder Ride. So if you go to all of your typical podcatchers of choice, whether that's Apple Podcasts, formerly iTunes, or Google Play, Stitcher, Podomatic, or any any of the, uh, of the typical podcatchers, even YouTube, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, just look for The Wilder Ride and hit subscribe. And by the way, whatever podcatcher you use, if you don't mind giving us a rating and maybe just a quick comment, the comment does tend to give the rating a little bit more weight. We would love to have you comment on what you think of the show and think of the podcast itself. My co-host Walt Murray and I love bringing the movies of Gene Wilder to life one minute at a time. Season one last year was dedicated to Young Frankenstein, and we are currently in the midst of rolling out season two blazing saddles so just check us out the wilder ride you can find us everywhere and if you would like to support us financially we even have a patreon page we've got various tiers of support and would appreciate whatever you might be willing to give patreon.com forward slash the wilder ride that is all for minute 88 michael myers minute is a production of lemming drops studio you can find more content at lemmingdrops.com stalking on twitter and facebook at myers minute or instagram michael myers minute 
Don't forget to subscribe and leave a nice review if you like what you hear. Until next time. See you later. Bye. Bye.